Hey guys, it's Kato here, and today I wanted to talk about why parallel walls might not be as bad for acoustics as we all think. So if you're wondering why, hang out with me for a minute and I'll explain it. Okay, so we're all taught that parallel walls are bad for acoustics, right? So when the width of your room is the same across the entire length of your room, and when the length of your room stays the same value through the entire width of your room, uh, you get issues with uh, uneven frequency response, right? And we find that certain frequencies with wavelengths that are multiples of that room length or width, those frequencies are going to bounce off the wall in such a way that you're going to have the direct signal interacting with the reflected signal, and those two signals interacting with each other can cause things like standing waves, right? And so that's how you get certain frequencies that will actually null them themselves out or they'll augment themselves and that's how we get that uneven frequency response and we all know that we don't want uh, uneven frequency response when mixing we want even frequency response when mixing right so that's how we get to the whole parallel walls are bad for acoustics and that's why you'll notice a lot of studios have the slanted ceilings or the slanted walls and that's because even without any acoustic treatment you're going to get uneven frequency response in a room with parallel walls and i'm not debating whether or not the idea is true because parallel walls do cause that sort of a problem it's a very well established fact but with parallel walls, we can do the math to figure out how to treat the room, right? So you can plug in your room's dimensions into a formula. So the length, the width, the height, and that formula will help you figure out what wavelengths and subsequently what frequencies are going to be a problem in your room, right? And so that's a very easy way to figure out how to treat your room, how you ha how to target um, what sort of treatment to do for your room. And I'll actually link to some of the textbooks that I used to use back when I took acoustics classes in the description below. And those books have formulas like that, and they explain the math behind the acoustics there way better than I could do here right now in this video. So I recommend checking out those books uh, if you're interested. But anyway, point is, we can do the math to figure out how to treat our rooms. And that's very important. And so there are even websites out there where you can plug in your room's dimensions and it'll do the math for, for you. So you don't even have to bother with the formulas anymore. There are websites that will do the math for you. And some of those websites even recommend specific types of treatment for your, for your space, right? And I'll see if I can't link to some websites like that in the description below for you guys too. But anyway, those sites are great. Uh, I remember checking one out a while back that actually it, it spat out information on if you're trying to make one of your own like at home wooden diffusers. If you guys haven't seen that, maybe I'll put an image of one right here. But basically, if you're trying to make your own at home wooden diffuser, it would, uh, you put in the dimensions of your room and it would spit out like four or five different lengths for the wooden little wooden blocks that make up the, the diffuser. So you could target the specific frequencies that are a problem in your room. So anyway, I was talking to the guys at AES about this issue and how my space doesn't have any parallel walls. Like it's not a very normal space. I don't think it has parallel walls. Um, not really. So it's a weird space. So I have a little alcove for my balcony over here that like sticks out from the shape of the room. And then I have a drop here. So I'm actually in a little loft and there's a drop down into the kitchen and living room area. And the whole space is just not a normal geometric shape, right? So I personally don't know how to do the math for this space. And I guess I could kind of round it off and pretend it's it's a square, ignore like the little cubby and stuff and um, try to make it into a rectangular shape and then do the math that way. But either way, it's not going to be as accurate, right? So I don't know how to accurately do the math on the space. And that's, um, it makes it a lot harder to treat acoustically. It makes it more of a challenge, right? So when I was talking to the guys, we talked about this, and this is when I kind of decided that maybe parallel walls aren't as bad as we all make them out to be, right? So 
I think maybe for these reasons, you know, they're given a bad rap. And that's because it's, it's at least we know how to handle parallel walls. We know how to deal with them. We know how to target acoustic treatment for them more easily, at least. So... Anyway, let me know what you think and let me know in the comments below. And for today's question, I wanna know what kind of issues you've run into while treating your space acoustically. And let me know if you have any suggestions for my space in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday. So uh, I look forward to talking to you guys about audio, sharing what we've learned with each other. It's gonna be a great time. So uh, thanks for watching. Okay. Damn it, I tapped the mic.